It's red, it's round, and it's coming your way. Cricket next on ESPN Classic. Yeah. It's Test Match History. Oh, beautiful shape. Beautiful shape. And he's done it. Welcome to the highlights of the first day's play. A day that began with uh, Kim Hughes and the Australian side 1-0 up in the series. A great victory at Trent Bridge, a draw at Lords, and now as the two captains went out to toss and exchange teams, this is what they showed one another. England, there are 11 players without a spinner. Embury left out of the side, and Peter Willey, the all-rounder, put down there in the list as batsman and off-spin bowler. Australia, a balanced team. Three quick bowlers, Alderman Lawson and Lilly at the bottom, and Ray Bright, who bowled very well at Lords, doing the spinning. A well-balanced side, and Australia won the toss, and a very good toss it was to win, too. The pitch looked uh, dry and hard. I thought there'd be a bit of pace in it at first, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if there turned out to be some spin later on. Here's the third ball of the first over. It's Willis bowling to Wood, and a leg by is the only score on the board. With me in the commentary box is Ted Dexter. And first touch for Mike Brealy. Experienced though he is, that'll uh, remove one or two of the butterflies. Always nice to get your hand on the ball early on in a test match, particularly if you're making a comeback at 39. Graham Dilly at uh, deep fine leg. Four runs for that to Graham Wood. Shot. Follow that and did so quite nicely. Four more to Graham Wood. Doesn't muck around this fellow. He outscored everyone at uh, Lords in the early part of the Australian innings. Yes, he's put the bat on this one very nicely. Didn't really get his foot there. Chris Holt now to roll to Graham Wood. And the first ball Wood has faced from Old. And it's really racing away down there. No real chance for Jeffrey Boycott. It accelerated instead of stopping as it neared the boundary edge. There are at least two in that. And Willis, although he seemed to labour after it a little bit his throw was a good strong one but uh, really won't get them with balls like that it really was a gift and wood making no mistake lovely open space that extra cover Just in time to change his mind about playing at that one. Well, he's tried to take the bat away, but he's actually played it, played it off the face down, and a really snappy piece of fielding by Ian Botham. And that could go all the way. Dyson's first four, taking him into double figures with nearly an hour's play completed. And 
there it is, the 50 up. And only the 15th uh, over of the morning. And with this fast outfield and a lot of close fielders, fine start by Australia. Side edge just in front of Taylor and four runs. And it really doesn't look like being Chris Old's day. Good delivery, nips back, it's not that short. Little inside edge must have gone very, very close to the stumps. He's gone, and Ian Botham has done it. Third ball. And the old magic returns. With a bit of help, I think one must say, from the pitch, because it did appear to keep rather low. But what a start. And what a morale booster for Botham and, indeed, for Brearley and for England as a well. 55 for one, then. And at that stage, anyway, life was looking pretty good for Ian Botham, who had taken the one wicket to fall, that of Graham Wood for 34. A struggling innings of 20 not out by John Dyson. Trevor Chappell hung on there until lunch. Five more runs added to take the score up to 60 for one. 105 minutes lost to play in uh, rain out there with the covers going on and uh, rather a dismal sight. We pick up play now after lunch and it's Chris Old coming into bowl to Trevor Chappell. Just uh, two leg buys added to that total to take it to 62 for one and in the commentary box, Tom Graveney and Christopher Martin-Jenkins. Oh, and uh, remember Chapel was out at Gord's when he was unable to avoid a ball he was trying to leave and he wasn't so far off gloving that one as well. And that's far too close to the off stem to leave. Very useful piece of bowling here by Chris Old. But he's off the mark now. Remember how Graham Wood in the One Day International up here got hit by a nasty delivery of that type from uh, Mike Hendrick. put him down, Gower at third slip, normally very safe, difficult one, he got both hands to it, it was uh, to the left, to the more awkward side for a right-handed fielder, Mike Brearley some um, three, three and a half, four yards away. Beautifully timed, and that'll beat Boycott. There's a good stroke from Dyson. thinking about a square cut here but he he doesn't really pick the bat up enough to go for that shot perhaps he does when he's really in and flowing but not at the moment that outfield is so fast down here at our end of the ground that there's no chance of any of those close-in catches cutting it off just a little gentle almost a soft edge 41 Dyson 7 Chapel Believe it.
And after that uh, drop catch, just six more runs added up to the tee interval to take the score along to 97 for one, 43 to Dyson and 11 to Trevor Chappell. <laughs> We pick up play now in the first over after tee, two runs added. It's Bob Willis coming into ball to Trevor Chappell and Ted Dexter and Chris Martin Jenkins are in the commentary box. So the 100 coming up for Australia in the 43rd over. And the scoreboard a little slow to react. for it again they've got it and there is John Dyson's 50 and that is a great moment for this young man from New South Wales not so very young 27 years of age and it's the first 50 that he's made since his very first test innings against India at Perth in 77-78 yes yeah, so that's going to be four runs and that is John Dyson's highest score in Test cricket and probably the best shot he's played. And with each passing delivery, this looks a more valuable innings. Quite a pleasant evening now and every hope that we'll continue through till seven o'clock with the extra hour being played, which would mean that we would only have lost three quarters of an hour altogether. And that's going all the way. Pitching too short and following on the, the freest shot that Dyson has played. Chapel also getting a satisfying four. Short and outside the off stump and only cover and mid off to beat. Graham Dilley coming in to John Dyson. Oh, I don't believe it. But it's happened. Three have gone down now, and that was hard, and to his left, it was uh, only a half chance, I think. Really, this shot was beautifully timed by John Dice and hit it right in the middle. And it, I think it was almost self protection there for Ian Both. And he did very, very well to stop it. Fine shot. Graham Dilly doing a lily. The, the autograph books on the boundary, he's down at Deep Fine Lake. Good top spinner, and he picked it well. Smashed it. Great style past square leg. Really just pitching a fraction too short there, but Dyson was very, very quick onto that. This partnership and the one between Wood and Dyson will be seen to be quite priceless to Australia. I just have a feeling that uh, two of the Australian bowlers, at least Lily and Lawson, Safely away, too short from Willie. No real chance of being caught except by the keeper there. Quite a safe stroke. So there's an easy three there. He's always going to stop just inside the boundary. Ian both in the fielder. Good shot. That's the shot of the day as far as Dyson's concerned. A glorious stroke. Perfect placement. The ball itself wasn't all that bad, perhaps a fraction short. But he cracked it beautifully off the back foot. Oh, he's gone. Caught behind. Trevor Chappell out caught Taylor Bowl Willie and spin takes the second wicket. 149 for two. An excellent partnership between Dyson and Trevor Chappell comes to an end. 
They took the score from 55 to 149. Chasing in three there quite easily, but Dyson fit to come back. Up comes the 150. It's not uh, what all the applause is for. The applause was for Jeffrey Boycott's return from the outfield. And there it is, off the edge, John Dyson has reached his first Test 100 in his 12th Test match, having never before made more than 53 in a Test innings. Marvellous moment for him. And more than that, a vital innings for Australia. him. John Dyson has gone just in the last 20 minutes. A little loosener from Graham Dilley there. He really wasn't putting anything into it at all. And Dyson, as he has done a couple of times on this tour, is hitting it away through mid-wicket. up the 200 for Australia and just three more runs to take the total on to 203 for three at the close with Bright the night watchman one not out and Hughes 24 splendid innings that from John Dyson and a frustrating day for the England bowlers only three successes there Dilly Botham and Willie Willis and old I thought Chris old bowled extremely well all day without any luck but certainly it was a most frustrating day and uh, by contrast, a tremendously exciting day for the Australians, one up in the series, and here winning the toss, and after a lot of del uh, deliberation with uh, Hughes and Marsh and Philpott out in the pitch deciding to bat. It's test.